Good evening, everybody. How are you all doing this evening time? Yeah. Wasn't that a powerful time of worship? Shall we put our hands together for the worship team, which did a phenomenal job this evening. Great job, guys, wherever you are. May the Lord bless you all abundantly. Amen. Uh, first of all, I want to greet uh, Pastor Drew, Pastor Lauren, and all of you in the sweet name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You know, right up front, I want to honor the visionaries of this house, people with the spiritual uh, authority over this house, Pastor Drew and Pastor Lauren. My wife and I, we truly love you. And we don't have words enough to say thank you. You guys are awesome. And we really appreciate you, all right? You know, you already know this about Pastor Drew and Pastor Lauren. In case you don't, let me just remind you a few things about these guys. Number one, these are people who truly love Jesus. And that is so beautiful. You see, the biggest passion in the heart of Jesus is the local church. And the biggest passion in Pastor Drew and Pastor Lauren's heart is the local church. Their church and churches across this nation which God is birthing. And that is not normal at all. This is a couple who truly caught the heart of God. And that's a sign that they truly love Jesus. And that is amazing. The second thing I can tell about them is, this is a, these guys truly love the word of God. Which is very important. Can you believe there are pastors who don't read the Bible? Well, thank God for these guys who love the word, who are in love with the word of God. But the third thing about them, and I'm sure you know it, any chance they get, they brag about you guys. You talk to them, there is no way escaping how awesome Lift Church is, how awesome the dream teamers in Lift Church is, how awesome the volunteers, the believers, those who attend in this church, if he's saying it must be true, so I'll go with that report. He's a man who truly loves you guys, which is phenomenal. So I honor you, my friend. May the Lord bless you abundantly in the days to come. You know, this evening, I want to take your attention to a portion of scripture, which is found in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 11. And I'm going to read from verse 5 through verse 13. Luke chapter 11, verse 5 through 13. This is what we read there. Then Jesus said to them, suppose you have a friend and you go to him at midnight and say, friend, lend me three loaves of bread. A friend of mine on a journey has come to me and I have no food to offer him. And suppose the one inside answers, don't bother me. The door is already locked and my children and I are in bed. I can't get up and give up anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give you the bread because of friendship, yet because of your shameless audacity. Everybody say that, shameless audacity. He will surely get up and give you as much as you need. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? You see, I love people. I, uh, by the grace of God, I have had the privilege to travel several nations, different continents of the world, meet all kind of peoples. I love people. I love every color of people. I love every background of people. I love boomers. I love Gen X. You know, I love the little children. I love millennials. But you know who's my favorite? My favorite are the Gen Z's. Go Gen Z's, all right. And I think 
it's only appropriate that I read that same text we read from NIV in the Gen Z version. <laughs> all right. After all, we want them to get it. All right. So this is how the Gen Z version reads. So, like Jesus was telling them this story, right? Imagine you hit up your homie at like midnight. Like, bro, I'm starving. Can you hook me up with some bread? My buddy just rolled in and I got nothing to feed him. And then picture this. Your friends are like, dude, it's late. My fam's asleep. I can't help you right now. Just go away. But here's the twist. Even if he's not down to help because you're pals, he'll still get up and give you what you need because you're so bold and unashamed about it. Then Jesus dropped some wisdom, saying, Yo, just ask for what you need. Seek what you're after. Knock on that door and it's gonna open up for you. Like everyone who asks gets, everyone who seeks finds, and whoever knocks, well, the door's gonna swing open, bro. <laughs> then he hit them with a real talk moment. Like, think about it. If your kid asks for fish, you ain't gonna hand them a snake, right? Or if they want an egg, you're not gonna give them a scorpion. Duh. Even though you're flawed, you still know how to give good stuff to your kids. So imagine how much more your heavenly father is going to hook you up with the Holy Spirit if you just ask him. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ain't God awesome? You didn't know God speaks Gen Z, right? <laughs> you see, when we were coming here, when Pastor Drew invited us to speak, he said, bro, so like, <laughs> he's like, Freddie, your church's name is Audacious Hope. I want you to talk about Audacious Hope. And the moment he said that, my heart went to this passage. This message which I'm speaking, I'm speaking for the first time. So you're my guinea pigs. Even my wife never got to hear this. So we preachers, usually when we are invited, we like to preach the tested and tried one. All right? But this one, I'm going to test and try on you guys. All right? But it's good because it's the word of God. You see, when one day I was seeking the face of the Lord... Holy Spirit spoke to me through this passage, and that's where we got the name audacious. That's where that word audacious in our name, audacious hope, come from. So this evening, I want to talk to us about audacious prayer. Everybody say audacious prayer. And I pray the Holy Spirit is going to help us to understand and study this portion. You see, when we are looking at this passage... There is no way we can grapple with this passage without looking at understanding from three lens. Lens number one, lens of friendship. Number two, the word called as midnight. And the third is the word audacious. So these are the three key terms. Friendship, midnight, and audacious. You see, in this story, what's happening is a guy is sleeping in his house. All of a sudden, he hears a knock at the door. A friend of his has showed up. There is no food in the house. In the Middle East, if anybody shows up in your house anytime, you feed them. This is late in the night. There is no food. So he's like, what do I do? He's like, I'll go to my friend's house and I'll ask him to give me some food. So now the, he goes, he knocks at the door of his friend and he says, get up, give me food. He's like, go away. I don't have time for this. My kids are sleeping. If I turn the light on, the kids will wake up and you have no idea the struggle I had to put them to sleep. So I am waking them up, but this guy is like, no, I need the bread. And this guy is like, the Lord says, he's going to give you bread, not because you're friends, but because of your shameless audacity. He's going to give you the bread. You see, 
So here are the three characters. One is the friend in the home whose door is getting knocked at. That friend is representing God in this passage. There is a friend who is knocking the door. And that man is representing the believer. And then there is this friend who has showed up unexpectedly in his house. And that is a representative of any situation which will show up in your life for which you are not ready. Unexpected. And you never thought in your wildest dream it will happen to you. Has anybody been there? If you haven't, you just have not lived long enough. You know, friends, the word of God is clear. There is, in this life, you will have trouble. Many think that means God is saying, in this world, I'll give you trouble. No, that's not what God said. He said, in this world, you will have what? Trouble. The things you could not think of, dreamt of, you did not even imagine could happen to you. You were minding your own business and life happened to you. There are people like that in this room this evening. I wish we could control everything in our life. We had our budget set and that's when the check engine light turns on, right? Listen, it does not matter what unexpected situation you have in your life. Do not be surprised an unexpected situation happened in your life. The thing that matters is how are you responding? Who are you going to with that problem? Many times when problem hits our life, what people do is they go and meet themselves. They go and uh, prop themselves up in the bed or lie under, a, 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 you know, a covers and they're like, why is this happening to me? This is not fair. I did not ask for it. Listen, we can do that or there is a, another option, a better way. Do this, whatever you want, but then go to the one who can do something about it. In this story, there is only one guy who has bread in his house. The one with the bread is not the one in need. The one who is in need, if he needs the bread, he needs to go to the house of the one who has the bread. This evening, can I submit to us, the one who has the bread is here this evening in the Lift Church. His name is Jesus Christ. He is the one with the bread. You are in need. Go to him. Hallelujah. Go to him. He is dependable. He is trustworthy. You can count on it. But this story is not about approaching him. This story is about how are you approaching him. You see, this is not a story about come to God. This is a story, come with a swag to God. Come with a boldness to God. Come with a confidence to God. Don't go to God, oh Lord, poor me, helpless me, hopeless me, miserable me. No, God, I'm coming to you. I am knocking on the door. I'm your child. I'm talking to my father. This is not about approaching God. This story is about how are we approaching God. You see, this is a story of illegal prayer. This is not a story of legal prayer. You see, the will of the man in the house is already made clear. Do not disturb me. My wife, my children are sleeping. Do not trouble me. The will of the man in the house is clear already. He's like, leave me alone. Do not disturb me. It's midnight. But this guy is not going to care about it. Now, this is why this is very important to understand. This kind of prayer is not from the right of sonship. This kind of prayer comes from the relationship of mature friendship. Can I say this again? 
this kind of prayer does not come from the right of sonship. This kind of prayer comes from the maturity of friendship, relationship of mature friendship. That's where this prayer comes from. You see, any child can run into her father's office. Dad is in the board boardroom doing the business meeting, but this little baby, she's like, Daddy, runs in, Dad takes her, and like, oh, oh baby, all right, go, all right, sends her away. But now imagine this same child, grown up a bit, and runs into Dad, Daddy, 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 I need a dollar. Dad is doing a million dollar business here. I need a dollar to buy candy. Dad is like, do not disturb me right now. Listen, both the time this child is a child, but the way dad is dealing is different because there are stages of sonship. In Bible, there are stages of sonship. Now, I want you to understand, just by the virtue of being sons of God, the right God has given to the, all those who received him, those who believed in his name, he has given them the right to become the children of God. Pastor Drew told me that this is the Wednesday evening is the evening where you go deep because these are all hungry people who show up. So I know I'm talking to the right group here today, all right? So everybody say, I'm a child. Let that never be in doubt. We are children of God. Are you with me? And because of the virtue of being children, we have some rights. But this story is not about those rights of being children. You see, Bible talks about stages of sonship where growth happens. Stage number one, the Greek word is nepios. Nepios is basically a word used for infant. Then it talks about pidon. Pidon is little children. Then it talks about the Greek word technon which is the adolescent child. Then it talks about nyaniskos, which is a young man. Then huios, which is a mature son. Leave that on this, that, that slide, if you can put on that uh, on the screen and leave it up for a bit, that will be helpful. Listen, infant, little children, adolescent, young man, mature son. Infants, little children, adolescent, young man, mature son. All of these are children. But the privileges are changing. The way the father deals with them now begins to change. Now the father is dealing with them in different, different ways. It's like that little child who's like, oh, she's now four-year-old and she runs to dad. Dad, dad, what, what child, what child? I love Alex. Oh, you love Alex? Yeah. Dad, I want to marry him. Dad is like, oh, child, yes, you're four-year-old. You want to marry Alex? Yeah, we will do that tomorrow. Right now, you go to bed. This child goes to bed. She's growing up. Are you getting what I'm talking here? I need to go fast forward. They have put the clock on speed here. <laughs> Listen. There is a growth in maturity in Christian life. And when that maturity comes, God is not dealing with us just as sons. Now he's dealing with us as friends. That's why Abraham is called a friend of God. He's not called a friend of God because he was an old man with big beard. And God is the ancient of days, an old man with big beard. No, 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 no. He's called a friend of God because of the maturity he's displaying in his walk with the Lord. And I want to submit to us, God wants us to be his friends. You know what is the biggest boast of a dad? The greatest desire of his dad when his children become his friends. Let me tell you, there is no prouder a dad than a dad who can look at his children and tell others, that's my friend. 
that has got nothing to do with the educational situation of the children. It has got nothing to do with how much money they are making or the social standing of the children. But the day the dad can say, that child of mine is my friend, that is the most proudest day of the father's life. That's what this story is about. You see, what is this guy saying? This guy is like, dude, you are being inconvenient. But over the years, we have built a relational equity. We have done life together. You have seen how I have loved you. You have seen how I have showed up for you. And right now, I'm in a situation. I don't need help tomorrow. I need bread now. Are you with me today, church? Listen. Anybody who's born again is a child of God. Let there be no doubt about it. But this evening, the Holy Spirit is calling us to maturity. To grow. To grow. To grow to that full measure of Christ Jesus. Next thing I wanted to say, now after pastor made an announcement, now I don't know whether I can say that all, at all. But let me just say that anyway because the Holy Spirit has laid it in my heart. <laughs> A clear marker of Christian maturity is generous giving. It's quite possible to be in love with Jesus and not be a generous giver to the kingdom of God. But it is quite improbable that you are a generous giver in the kingdom of God and not be in love with Jesus. Did you hear that? Of all the markers, one of the markers of maturity is generosity. I'm not going to dig into that at all. On the way here, Holy Spirit spoke to me. I wrote it down, and then Pastor makes this announcement. So I'm just going to read this, and I'm going to move on. <laughs> you missed a great message right now. Well, what, what can I do? Blame your pastor. <laughs> but that comes to the third word, audacity. You see, this is a powerful and a loaded word. Audacious, unashamed. You know, I wanted to contrast it with the opposite of this, which is modesty. Eidos is a Greek word, and idea is a word for audacious. So there is no time to get into that. But let's get to an idea, or audacious, the Greek word. What does that mean? Audacity means being bold and not caring about any limits, like the one set by common sense, manners, or traditions. It's all about doing something fearless or even kind of rude without caring about the consequences. Insolence is being confident to the point of not caring about what others think or say. It's like being impudent and not holding back willing to do whatever it takes to get what you want without caring about how you do it because you are in relationship with your Savior. Are you getting that today? There is a Salisbury to be won. There is a Salisbury, Maryland to be reached. It needs some audacious people. Without audacious people, that is not going to happen. People who don't care about others' report. People who don't care about tradition. People who don't care. What are you going to do? Oh, I know you. No, you don't. You don't. I'm in need. I met Jesus. I'm changed. Is anybody listening to me? was a man named John Knox. I remember going to Edinburgh in Scotland, sitting in the chapel, being moved to my core by this man named John Knox. In the history of church and reformation, there was in Scotland a queen named Bloody Mary who was killing Protestants right and left. And between her and the annihilation of the gospel truth stood one man, 
named John Knox. When he died, later during the development, he was buried in a place. When the development of that city is taking place, they cleared the cemetery, all the grave. They did not touch John Knox's grave. They're like, if we move it, judgment will come. This is hundreds of years later. They don't want to touch it. That's how scared they are of John Knox in Scotland even today. You know why? That man said to Jesus, give me Scotland or I die. That audacious prayer, give me Scotland or I die. If you don't give me Scotland, I don't want to live. If you don't give me Salisbury, I don't want to live. If you don't give me my high school, I don't want to live. If you don't give me my university, I don't want to live. If you don't give me Maryland, I don't want to live. If you don't give me this nation, I don't want to live. If you don't give me the nations of the world, I don't want to live. I am audacious. I have needs and I go boldly. Are you listening to me tonight, church? I want to submit to you two things tonight. Be audacious about your need. But get more audacious about God's need. Is anybody with me tonight? You know what do I see here? Oh, I rejoice. I celebrate all these young people in the front. Let me tell you, you guys are not ordinary. The power of God, the hand of God, the favor of God, the spirit of God in you, upon you, over you is exceptional. Pastor Drew, out of this crowd, out of this group are going to rise up champions, warriors who are going to stand up for God and his gospel. People who will impact history for the cause of the kingdom. These people are in this room and to those in the back, can I submit to you, God is not a respecter of age. It does not matter what your age is because you have a willing heart. Some of you are really feeling that pang within you and you are getting stirred up within you and because of your surrender today, the Lord, your Savior is going to use you with significance, with purpose, with glory, with that you will make an impact for His kingdom. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Kingdom of God never. Uh, uh, sorry, my time's up. Kingdom of God never advanced because of those who followed God from a distance and only prayed legal prayers. Kingdom of God has only advanced because of those who are in loving relationship with Jesus and got into deep friendship with Him and they captured the heart of God and God has captured their heart and they made some illegal prayers. No time. But tonight, there are people in love with Jesus in this room. There is no doubt about it. I do not have a doubt even for a little second that you guys don't love Jesus. But the invitation tonight is to get into friendship that comes only from mature sonship. Are you with me here tonight? I'm going to say this once and only once. Your age does not matter. Your education doesn't matter. How long you've been in church, is this the first time or you were born in a church, it doesn't matter. But I'm going to ask you this one time and one time only. Everyone who is saying, Father, I yield myself to be a friend of God, a mature son of God who can come to you and speak audaciously. That's me. If that's you, get up from your chair and come to the altar. Come now.
on your life is real. The calling of God upon you is magnificent. No eyes have in no ears have heard, no mind has even perceived, even in their secret corners of the great lands your heavenly father has for you. Your people of power, your people of purpose, your people of destiny, you are going somewhere. Some of you are growing faster than others. Others are growing slower than others. But it does not matter because I can see through the lens of the Spirit, every one of you is growing and you are yielded and surrendered to Jesus. And that is absolutely spectacular. As our pastor said right in the beginning, our Heavenly Father is pleased with our offerings. A heart that is in love with Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Now, as every eyes are closed, I want everybody to open their mouth and start talking to Jesus. You do not have to be technically correct. You don't need some very spectacular language in your own way. Say, Jesus, I want to be your friend. I want to be your friend. I want to grow in maturity. I want to grow in maturity, Lord. I want to grow in maturity. Hallelujah. I want to grow in maturity. Help me, Lord. I want to pray some audacious prayer in my life. I'm in need. I need to pray some audacious prayer. Lord, in my calling, hallelujah, there is a heart that's on fire. There are hearts on fire, hallelujah. Many of you are really stirred and you're like, I want to serve, I want to serve. Yes, you can serve. That's what our dream teams are for, for you to serve. That's what, th there are a lot of opportunities to come alongside the vision of this house. God is going to bring, use you to make impact, impact. Some of you are, oh my God is the weight of God's glory on some of these lives here in front is so heavy. Jesus. Nobody silent. Lift your voices and start praying. You don't have to scream loud. You can pray softly, but you need to pray so that your ears can hear. And you don't have to worry about the grammar of your prayer. You can be very simple. Jesus, I want to be a friend. Jesus, I want to be a friend. Pastor Drew, I, I, can you just come up on the stage? Hallelujah. Jesus, I want to be a friend. I don't want to be just a child. I want to be a friend of God. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The power of the Lord is going to fall in such a heavy measure on your lives. I sense there is going to be an intimacy in your relationship with Jesus. Many of you, when you study the word of God, the Lord is going to open scriptures. You will have dreams. You will have visions. You will have a boldness which is not common, which is not human. It is a stirring of the Lord. There will be a boldness to talk about Jesus that is descending in this room right now. Thank you, Lord. There is so much tears flowing in this room, which is a sign of the deep work of the Holy Spirit in you. The Lord knows you. He knows you. The Lord loves you. Maturity is not becoming perfect. Maturity is knowing the heart of God. He's not looking for your performance. He's looking for your love and your relation with Him. Jesus. As everybody's praying, as a father of this house, I want to ask Pastor Drew this question. I want him, to, would you be willing to stretch your hands and bless your people? There is a deep stirring of hunger within just bless them as a father with maturity and that intimacy with Jesus. Just bless your people.